Please can you welcome John Zimmer <coughs> and the subject, pay attention. Pay attention, John Zimmer. Fellow Toastmasters, we need to talk. We have a problem, a big problem. A problem that makes the financial crisis seem like the overdue balance on my credit card. <laughs> Bad example, but you get the point. And what's the problem? It's our audiences. They don't pay attention anymore. They doodle on their papers, they stare out the window. They cough, they chat, they sneeze, they snooze, they burp, they yawn, they fidget. Present company excluded, of course. <laughs> but contest chair, fellow Toastmasters, and anyone who's ever wanted to grab the guy who keeps playing with his Blackberry and say, would you please put that stupid thing away and pay attention to what I'm saying? Our audiences aren't listening to us. How did this happen? I'll tell you how. It's his fault. Ralph Smedley. The man who founded Toastmasters in 1924 was too nice in his approach to public speaking. And we've all grown soft because of it. <laughs> Don't take my word for it. Listen to some of the things that Dr. Spedley himself had to say. Adult education can be handled in a social atmosphere. We learn best in moments of enjoyment. Oh, come on. <laughs> No profit grows where no pleasure is taken. This is just wrong. Public speaking isn't supposed to be enjoyable. Oh, sure, it might have been fine when Ralph Smedley's did, but what did his audiences have to deal with? World War I, the Great Depression, World War II. Let me tell you something. Ralph Smedley's audiences never knew the pain of a slow internet connection. <laughs> Embarrassing photos displayed across Facebook. <laughs> they never heard Paris Hilton say. <laughs> no, times are tougher and our audiences have grown tougher with them. The kind, fatherly face of Ralph Smedley has taken us far, but it's history. If Toastmasters is to survive the future, we need a new face to take us forward, and I have found that face. <laughs> Terminator is our role model. We could create a lean, meaner breed of Toastmasters. <laughs> Toastmasters who strike fear in the hearts of their audiences and compel their attention. But to do this, we need to restructure the competent communicator program to make the training much more rigorous. Now, I've been giving this some thought, and with your indulgence, I'd like to share with you a glimpse of what the future could be like. But a word of caution, it's not for the faint of heart. Speech number one. <laughs> the bone breaker. <laughs> you will introduce yourself while being booed, teased, and yelled at by your fellow Toastmasters. <laughs> if you start to cry, the sergeant at arms will break your fingers. <laughs> Speech number seven. Your body speaks. You will convey your message and achieve your purpose using movement, <laughs> gestures, and facial expressions. <laughs> standing barefoot on a bed of hot coals. <laughs> Speech number 10. Persuade with power. Your evaluator will be armed with a high-powered rifle. You have five to seven minutes to persuade him not to shoot you. you will become a competent communicator. <laughs> if not, you won't be back. <laughs> Some of you are probably thinking, this guy's nuts. I'm not crazy. 
Toastmasters? No, I see a new day for Toastmasters. And on that day, we'll take back the stage. On that day, we'll regain our audience's respect. On that day, we won't let those ribbons we get at club meetings lie forgotten in some drawer. No, on that day, we'll take them out, dust them off, wear them as medals of honor. <laughs> and wherever we go, the office, the theater, the beach, we'll hold our heads high. Occasionally, we'll cross paths with a fellow Toastmaster and stop. No words will pass. Just a wink and a nod. And here's to you, soldier. Salute. <laughs> Mary will bow. Women will gasp. And children will tug at their parents' sleeve, shouting, Mom, Dad, look! It's a Toastmaster! The bravest of these children will run up to us and say, Mr. Mister, when I grow up, I want to be a Toastmaster just like you! <laughs> and if the child, in his exuberance, stumbles over his words, I'll just smile, gently pat him on the cheek and say, Hey, little buddy, guess what? You're not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> This is my dream. <laughs> from California to Kathmandu, from Bangkok to Bamberg, we Toastmasters will once again stand tall. And it can all begin right here, right now. Join me. As Winston Churchill famously said, I have nothing to offer but blood, toil, tears, and sweat. But I promise you this. Our audiences will definitely pay attention. <laughs> Contest chair.